begin learning Dastrinos. We're in the middle of Simon Mem in the uh, what's it called? The regular edition. And on the bilingual edition we're on page 76. And today he's going to review a bunch of concepts that we already learned. He's in the summary section. But he's actually going to introduce some other topics within those concepts that we didn't really touch upon. So it'll be very exciting. What's also very exciting about this is it is very, 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 very relevant to Rosh Hashanah what we're learning. This whole Sefer is very relevant to Rosh Hashanah. So if you notice, I mentioned on Thursday that if you look in the prayers in Rosh Hashanah, what is the theme that comes up over and over again? As Rabbi Stor will tell you, it is Malchus, the kingship, accepting Hashem as king, that we daven and we pray that the entire world should recognize that there is one God, He is the one in control, and that we want the end of days to come. The end of days, we mean positively, that when, when the world will recognize that Hashem is one. Aleinu, which we say every, after every davening. And al Nikava, that's we say in the middle of Musaf on Rosh Hashanah. In the highest, the highest part of the prayers, perhaps you could say. And that's all about recognizing that Hashem is king, recognizing that Hashem is one. And as we've learned in Das Tuna so far, the entire purpose of creation is that mankind should come to the recognition that God is one. And this is the Kedusha Sayom, this is the holiness of the day on Rosh Hashanah. So we're actually, it's very relevant what we're learning now. And we, could have the, we should have these ideas in mind when we're davening on Rosh Hashanah. In fact, the whole, uh, it's the whole Kedusha Sayom, the, the definition of the holiday, you would say, if you look in the davening, is that we should recognize that Hashem is the king. That's a, it's an interesting prayer. Many people are bothered in the, we ask, one of the things we ask for on Rosh Hashanah is that the Jewish people should be glorified. Like what? Like, that seems very, like, arrogant. You know, like, what well, we want to be, like, important. Never bothered me. Never bothered you? Mm-hmm. Okay. So it bothered me a little bit. Well, I'm Jewish, I'm Jewish. I'll tell you, it bothered me a little bit. I know it bothered others because my Rashiva said, the shot is, this is the explanation. The Jewish people were given the Torah. What does it say? It's, um, in, uh, yeah. By, uh, before Melchor Kodesh. Right. You want to honor for the... No, but, but, oh, exactly. But that's the, you know the answer. You ruined, you ruined my but class. You know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Giving away the answer. Oh, I went to Yeshiva for 30 years. I know the answer. Right? <laughs> <laughs> not everyone, not everyone in the... Yeah, not everyone in the uh, Alpha went to Riverdale. <laughs> I know where you got it from. Like, the source of it? Okay. okay, fine. So many of us from Alpha were bothered by this as we grew up. <laughs> Why are we asking for honor for the Jewish people? So the idea is because the... Jewish people are the recipients of the Torah. We are the, the people who received God's message for the world. And it's through us that we act in the way that God wants, in a godly way, that the entire world will recognize that God is one. So the Jewish people are the vehicle for this end goal of recognizing that Hashem is one. And this is the whole idea of Rosh Hashanah. And it's, we're going to summarize that now, and we'll touch on a, hopefully touch on a few more ideas. See if we can finish this uh, section as he breaks it up. Okay. Page 76 in the bilingual edition. Amr Seichel. And again, this is a conversation between the intellect and the, and the soul. So it says the intellect. So far, the end of this is Tira. Hashem wanted to go on this path, so He gave all of the lower creations, meaning us in this world, the opportunity, what, what, what was needed for complete perfection. When Hashem hides His face, He hides His face, in Ki'ilu, he hides his face. He gives um, place in the world for deficiencies, right? We see this evil in the world. This is something we discussed in previous weeks. There's evil in the world. We said the evil exists because Hashem, quote-unquote, hides his face, and that allows evil to exist, which seemingly demonstrates, Lachara, that there, God is not in total control, because if so, why does evil exist? Ubasitu makum lechasernus, when God gives opportunities for these deficiencies. So once, once we have the deficiencies in the world, what's the purpose? Is that so we have the opportunity to work, to get close to Hashem. If there was no evil in the world, if everything was perfect, there would be nothing for us to do. It would be great. Everything would be easy. You know? But Hashem allowed evil to exist so that we could have the opportunity to serve Him and have a choice between good and evil. How do we serve Him? We have free will. How do you have free will? You have two options, good and evil. If there's no evil, there would be no free will. There would be no service of Hashem. Lefisha, Hester, Asri, Rakadeli, Galos, However, 
Hashem made these deficiencies with the purpose that they eventually get erased. And when they get erased, that will be with the revelation of His completeness. Now, the and we said right there's two, we, we mentioned there's two ways that evil or the, these deficiencies can be destroyed. What are they? One is that human beings will choose on their own to do the right thing, and evil will be destroyed that way. Or two, humanity will not do the right thing, and Hashem Himself will destroy the evil. And we said that when Hashem destroys the evil, that will be the revelation of His oneness. They'll say, "Whoa, there's no, I see that the it seemed that there was some power of evil in the world." Or as some people thought, we talked about the five beliefs, false beliefs that people had, that they're seeming to be two gods, the God of good and God of, e- God of evil, all these other things. And people will see at the end of the days that when, if Hashem, dest- when Hashem destroys the evil by Himself, that, look, there was, uh, Hashem was the one in control the entire time. So it could either be that we do it through choosing to do the right thing, or Hashem by Himself destroys the evil. Shesof kol, shesof kol olam yimetukon betikon shalem. And what's after that? After Hashem destroys the evil, that is when the world will be perfected and rectified and everything will be perfect. And that's when humanity will get the reward for the service that they did for in, in this world of serving Hashem. So good and evil exist now, but it's not going to be like that forever. Eventually, evil will be destroyed and humanity will receive their ultimate reward. And it could either come through us doing it ourselves or through Hashem through Hashem doing it. Okay. Amra Hanashama says the soul. The Please can we summarize everything we said? Because there's a lot. A lot of what we said. I can I can relate to this. I can relate to what the Nishama is saying. Amra Seichel says the intellect. The principle is short and easy to accept. Hashem wanted to reveal His unity, His true essence. His true essence, His 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 oneness. There is no power that can go against Hashem at all. And based on this principle that Hashem wanted to reveal His oneness, He built the world. So Hashem first wanted to reveal His unity to the world, and He built the world based on that goal. But Klalhu, the principle is, Mashihu Master that which he hides his face, Kilu, and allows evil to exist, until he reveals his goodness, and evil will no longer be found, then the revelation of his oneness will be apparent. So we have this time period where Hashem hides himself, where evil exists. And that's going to be a definite time. After evil gets destroyed, that will be when the world is uh, rectified and all of humanity will receive the ultimate reward. Amr HaNashama says the soul, I still have a little bit of a question. Why do you have to say everything is dependent on Yichud? Right? On, on the oneness of Hashem? Why are you saying the whole world is built on that concept? You said something that was very logical to me at the beginning when we were speaking. Hashem wanted to do goodness to creations. Right? Why did Hashem create the world? Because Hashem is all good, and a being that is all good wants to be so good, bestow goodness on others. So what did Hashem do? Hashem created human beings so that He could bestow goodness on them. And what's the ultimate goodness? The ultimate goodness is that a human being receives reward through his efforts. Right? If you give someone a gift... They don't appreciate so much. It's a little embarrassing. I don't deserve this. But if you work for it, and then you get reward, that is the ultimate goodness. So Hashem created the world in order that people receive goodness. What's the ultimate goodness? Is that they should work for it. They should have uh, challenges in life and a battle between good and evil. And that when people choose good, they'll be rewarded. And that's the ultimate goodness, the ultimate pleasure a human being can achieve. So ask the Nisham Al-Kain, Sam HaSchar Ba'onish Ba'olam. So the Nisham is asking a question here. You told me that Hashem built the world just in order that we re- re- realize the oneness of Hashem. But on the other hand, you told me before that God created the world to bestow goodness upon humanity, and that's reward and punishment. So that a, a human, we created the world so that a human being should get a reward for the good things that he did and get punished for the bad things that he did, right? Because if a person wouldn't get punished 
and he would just get rewarded for the good things, and he wouldn't deserve it, so he wouldn't feel good. So the Nisham is asking, how do these two, let's say, axes work? How, how, what was the world created for in the end? Was it created that the whole world should recognize Hashem? Or was it created that we should get reward and punishment for our deeds? Amr HaSeichel says the intellect, We see from the world that God's unity is going to be revealed. And that's obvious. We see that the promises that God made in the books of the prophets that he's going to reveal his unity. And he brought many of those verses uh, above, like we were talking about in uh, the davening of Rosh Hashanah. All these verses are, are in the davening. We see all the promises in the prophets that Hashem will redeem the Jewish people. I feel a blow to us, even if they don't deserve it. And that the evil inclination will, will be removed from humanity, and he will force them to, and they will be forced to serve Hashem. And all of this is against the concept of free will and reward and punishment. If you're saying that the whole purpose of humanity is to recognize that Hashem is one, and there's going to be no question, everyone's going to realize it, like, wow, it's obvious, there's one God, there's no Yitzhar anymore, there's no free will. So, again, how are these concepts working? Now, if it was like you're saying that the sole purpose of the world was just to make reward and punishment. That the whole world should always, everyone should always have free will for eternity. That Hashem, maybe, like you're saying, you think Hashem is just going to let the world go. All the righteous people will get more righteous. All the evil people get more evil. And it'll just keep going like that forever. And it'll just be good for the righteous and bad for the evil. If it's like you're saying that the only reason Hashem created the world was to have free will, then He would have created this forever. That the good will keep doing good and get reward, and the evil will keep doing evil, and they'll get rewarded. Below yellow low hefzik, and there will be, there'll be no end to it. Punished. Punished, sorry. Punished. And this is what it was. Shekodesh Baruch Hu wrote to the Hasek Mimidus HaMishpat, Lahamid Kol Briyosav Bo Akal Panim. Avazai Yadanu. This is what we know. She'enu kach. That's not the way Hashem made the world. Kemo she'okach no mina mikros. Like we prove from the verses in the Torah. In the, in the Tanakh. The end of the day, Hashem will take away free will from humanity and there will be no more evil in the world. We'll summarize this in a second. It says, it says, that sins will be removed from the earth. If so, the end purpose of everything is not reward and punishment. Rather, on the general rectification. Rather, Hashem combined these two things as one. And this is from His plan to God's plan to lead the world to perfection. He says we're going to talk about this concept in more depth later because it is extremely important and very deep. So what the Ramachal is saying, is concluding, is that there are two ways that Hashem operates the world. One way is called Hanhaga Tzchar Va'onish. People get reward and punishment for the, for the actions that they do. However, and, and the reason for that is, is that Hashem wants to give the ultimate goodness to His creatures, and the only way that that happens is if we earn it ourselves. So that means we get punished for the bad things we do and get rewarded for the good things. However, Hashem also had another goal for, uh, for humanity, and that is that the world should eventually recognize that he is one. And at that point in, in history, in human history, which we are not at yet, there will be no more free will, and there will be no reward and punishment. So we shouldn't think that the only... that Hashem just made the world, you know, like, uh, like, the most, like a video game, like it's Mario. You know, you just go, you, you're born, you get as many points as you can, and then you go to the next world. And then it keeps on happening forever and ever and ever. People get born and die and born and die. That's not how Hashem made it. Hashem made it. Obviously, there's reward and punishment, but there's a greater purpose for humanity in a, in a whole that the world is heading to a final destination where everyone will recognize that Hashem is one. And, and the Ramchal later is going to talk about how these two hanhagas of Hashem, these two ways that Hashem deals with the world, sometimes one can be suspended for the other. Meaning sometimes a person or a nation could get punished more because it's going to, for, meaning they did a sin, but let's say usually with the regular Hanhaga of, of reward and punishment, they would get punished a little bit for what they did. But since they need a great punishment, 
Why? Why would they need a greater punishment? Because them getting a greater punishment would push the world towards the recognition that Hashem, Hashem is one. An example would be the Jewish people going down to Egypt. Uh, Avram Avinu said, Avram said, how do I know that uh, I'm going to inherit the land? So, uh, because of that sin, which he might not have gotten punished for so, so much, because he questioned Hashem a little bit, but because the Jewish people needed to go to Egypt so that they could go get the Torah, they were punished more than uh, they normally would have been deserved. So we're going to see that in human history, there's always this interaction between these two ways that Hashem deals with the world. The reward and punishment model and the revelation of His oneness model. And that's, uh, that's really the whole general idea of this, uh, of this Sefer. And it's also uh, what Rosh Hashanah is about. So hopefully we have a little bit of... Uh, we going to Rosh Hashanah knowing a little bit what the davening is about and what we're praying for. And in addition to listening to Rabbi Stort's beautiful melodies. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.